Hello everybody and a very good evening to you all. I hope you've had a lovely relaxing Sunday. Uh, my name is Helen and I am here for another bedtime story and today's is another classic about a very 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 clever cat oh, who also talks Oh, you might know this one quite well. We'll have to have a have a little think and see if you've heard this one before. It's a, it's a very good one. So how are we? Are we all ready? Are we all snuggled up, ready for a bedtime tale? I hope this one is nice and relaxing for you on this Sunday evening. If you're all ready, then I shall begin. Once there was a miller, and this miller had three sons. And when he died, he left the mill to his eldest son, left a donkey to his second son. But for the youngest son, do you know what he left? He left a cat. Meow! A cat! What am I going to do with a cat? Oh! The poor youngest son thought that he was never going to be able to make any money from a cat. But this was no ordinary cat. This was a very clever cat. A cat with a plan. Meow! Do not fear, said the cat. If you get me some boots and a sack, I will make you a fortune, he said. Huh? Boots and a sack and you will make me a fortune, thought the youngest son. Huh. But he really had nothing to lose at this point. And so he agreed. OK, here are some boots and here is a sack. And off the cat went. Now this cat became known as Puss in Boots. <laughs> I wonder why. This was because he was famous for walking along in his boots with his sack. Now Puss had a plan. He went straight to a field. He caught some rabbits. Meow, meow, and he took these rabbits to the king of the land. Now he plunked these rabbits on the feet of the king as he answered the door. And he said, your royal highness, these rabbits are a gift for you. They are a gift from my master, the Marquis of Carabas. And the king looked at these lovely rabbits and was rather shocked. He said, oh, a gift for me? From your master, the Marquis of Carabas. Why, I've never heard of the Marquis of Carabas before, but that's so very kind of him. Thank you. And so off Puss in Boots went. Now the next day, Puss caught some pheasants in the field. Meow! Meow! Perhaps you can join in with Puss's meows at home. Should we do it after three? Are we ready? We're going to meow all together. We'll go one, two, Three. Meow! Meow! <laughs> Very good. Oh, I can hear it. And Puss took these pheasants to the king of the land. He plumped them on the doorstep as the king opened the door. And the king saw these fantastic pheasants and he said, Oh, you're back. Is this another gift for me? And don't say it. It's from your master, the Marquis of Carabas. Why, yes, said Puss in Boots, a gift for you from my master, the Marquis of Calabas. And Puss went about his business every day, catching lovely food for the king. And a whole month went by and every day Puss would deliver a gift, a gift for the king. And he was so pleased of the Marquis of Calabas's generosity. Now, on the final day in the month, the king said to Puss, I am to be going out in my carriage with my daughter, the princess, later this afternoon. And Puss's ears pricked up. Oh, and where are you going out in your carriage? 
and the king told Puss the route that he would be taking with his daughter, the princess of the kingdom. And Puss ran as fast as he could all the way back to the miller's son. Can we do some meows again at home? Should we count in? We're going to do lots of meows as Puss is running fast and we can even run fast on the spot together. Are we ready? One, two, three. Meow! 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 Who's the loudest cat there? Meow! And Puss ran all the way home to the miller's son. And he said, quickly, quickly, you must go bathing in the river as quickly as you can. Come on, hurry, hurry, go to the river. And the miller's son thought, huh? Why do you want me to go to the river and swim in the river? Huh. But he did not question it. So off they went. And the miller's son took a bath in the river. Now, as he was bathing, who should go past? It was the king and the princess in a carriage. And suddenly Puss stood up tall and started shouting, Help! Help! My master, the Marquis of Carabas, is drowning! He shouted. And the king heard and said, The Marquis of Carabas, we must help him. And so he ordered some servants to go and help the Marquis of Carabas. Ah, oh, now he had no clothes because Puss had said that someone had stolen them whilst he was swimming in the river. So they dressed him in some royal finery. And while well, the miller's son looked very, very handsome, the princess fell in love with him instantly and said, Oh, please, father, will you let this man uh, join us on our carriage ride? And so the king agreed. Now, Puss's plan was not finished yet. He ran ahead of the carriage as fast as he could. Should we do some meows again? Are we ready? One, two, three. Meow! 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 Oh, we've got some expert cats out there now. And so he came across a field of hay and there were some workers in this field of hay and he said to them, oh please, the king is passing soon and when he does, will you please say that the Marquis of Carabas owns these fields? And the workers looked at the cat in the boots and thought, huh? Why would we say that the Marquis of Carabas owns these fields? And Puss said, if you do, I will come back with some jewels tomorrow. Huh. And so the workers agreed and off Puss ran. Now next to this field, there was a wonderful forest. And Puss saw some uh, woodcutters in the forest. And he said to the woodcutters, meow, uh, the king is passing here very, very soon. When he does, he might ask you who owns this forest. Will you tell him that it is my master, the Marquis of Carabas? And the woodcutters thought, huh, why would we say that someone called the Marquis of Carabas owns this forest? And Puss said, well, if you do, I will come back here tomorrow with a bag of jewels. Huh, a bag of jewels. The woodcutters could not say no to that. And so they agreed and off Puss ran. He ran and he ran until he came to an ogre's castle. Oh, it was a big, green, scary ogre that lived in this castle and we know how grumpy ogres are. Can we get our hands out and our faces like an ogre and can we do our best ogre noises? Can we go, Arrah! oh, can you pull a scary face? So maybe I can even see it from here if you pull it scary enough. Are we ready after three? One, two, three. Oh, fantastic. And Puss knew that the ogre lived here and knocked on the castle door. Oh, it took a few minutes for the ogre to answer. But when he did, he opened the door and pulled a scary face at Puss. He went, oh, why are you knocking at my door? 
Platypus was a little bit nervous, but knew he had to be strong. And he said, I've come to see how scary you are, Ogre, because I hear that you can transform yourself into a tiger in a split second. And the Ogre looked at Puss. Hmm. And the ogre said, yes, I can. I can transform into a tiger in a split second. And Puss said, mm, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Can you show me? And so the ogre was so angry that Puss did not believe him that he transformed into a huge tiger. And Puss was taken back by the roars. Oh, wow, said Puss. But transforming into a tiger is easy. It's much more difficult to transform into a small thing. Say, hmm, a mouse. And the ogre, in tiger form, looked Puss in the eyes and with a big roar, transformed into a teeny tiny mouse. Um, what noise do mice make? What noise do mice make? They go squeak, 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 squeak. And the ogre was a teeny tiny mouse zipping about the castle floor. And Puss is very good at catching mice. And with a one, a two, a three, Puss pounced and grabbed the mouse and gulp, swallowed the mouse whole. And that was the end of the ogre. Now, meanwhile, Back in our carriage, the king, the princess and the miller's son were having a fabulous time going through the countryside. And they went past this hay field. And the king said to the workers, excuse me, this is a lovely hay field. Who owns this hay field? And the workers looked at the king and they said, ah, this field is owned by our master, the Marquis of Carabas. And the king looked at the miller's son and said, wonderful hayfield you have here. And on they went. Now, where do they come to next? Can we remember? The hayfield and then the forest. And they drove past the forest in the carriage and the king did the same. He said, excuse me, who owns this forest? And the woodcutters looked up from chopping their logs and they looked at the king and they said, Your Majesty, this forest is owned by our master, the Marquis of Carabas. And the king looked again at the miller's son and said, Wow, what riches you have. What a fabulous forest. And on the carriage went. Now, who can remember where we go then? We have Hayfield, a forest, and then we come to the castle which is no longer inhabited by an ogre but inhabited by puss in boots and puss was waiting for the carriage as they arrived and puss said your royal majesty please come into the castle which belongs to my master the marquis of carabas and the man was gobsmacked he had no idea how puss had come up with a plan like this but he went along with it and Puss took them inside, where waiting for them was a fantastic feast of all of the most delicious foods you can imagine. All of the favourite foods, loads of it. And they sat down and the king and the princess and the miller's son and Puss had a beautiful feast. In fact, they got on so well that the king said to the miller's son, should you wish to marry my daughter, the princess, I give you permission. And the princess and the miller's son got on so well that they decided they would indeed marry. And it was all thanks to Puss's clever plan. And Puss, he was good to his word. He went back to the woodcutters and to the uh, workers in the hayfield and gave them a bag of jewels to say thank you for helping him with the plan. And Puss, Puss lived in gold boots from that point on and ate only the best food. And he only caught mice every now and again, just for a little bit of fun. The end. 
Oh, meow! Thank you so much for helping us to tell the story at home. We really enjoyed joining in with you. Give yourselves a clap. Oh, thanks, Puss, for helping us at home. And if you liked these, this lovely puppet, then why don't you take a little look at Puppets by Post? Because they are doing all sorts of lovely puppets which you can buy at home and you can tell your own stories. Or you might even make some of your own puppets, a little bit like the puppets that Vicky has been using in her stories. I think I'm going to have a go at that next week. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the story this evening. Uh, Vicky is back tomorrow night at eight o'clock for another bedtime story. And um, we're actually keeping the bedtime stories up on our Facebook page after we've told them. So if it's a little bit late for you and your little one's already in bed, or perhaps you want to watch them again because you really enjoyed them, then you can watch them on our Facebook page after we've told them and also on our YouTube channel, um, which is above bounds on there as well. So thanks, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful evening and good night. Bye. Meow.